that would be 35 and a quarter. Of course, I hadn't cut my aprons. I did this one foot long, but just over two foot wide. Um, I want to do a larger island. Then I moved into cutting double lap joints on the top of the leg uh, for the aprons to attach to. Probably should have used a cross cut sled here, but I learned from my ways when it come time to clean out most of the waste. Um, and then I just inch it over on the on the table saw with my cross cut sled until the majority of the waste was gone. Once I had most of the waste cut out, I created my trusty wooden mallet. Uh, build video for it is also on our channel if you want to check it out. Very, very simple tool build. Um, then it was just cleaning it up. Um, this was done with a chisel and just a little bit of elbow grease. I had uh, flaps cut out. Uh, this is a trick that I found on another channel. I don't remember where I saw it. Just very lightly and slowly run it backwards through the bandsaw. Uh, basically, you're wanting to hit the blade at a little bit more than a 45 degree angle. Uh, the slower you move, the more cuts. The faster you move, the less cuts. Um, after that, I went and trimmed the rest of my aprons down. And made sure that they were all the same length. I didn't show, but after I got all of my aprons cut down to their final dimensions, uh, they also got ran at that backward angle on the bandsaw just to keep the sawmill effect going. Um, I used one half the table to line everything up and decide where exactly I wanted to drill all my holes. Uh, for my pilots, I used a spade bit or a flat bit, whatever you want to call it, to do the countersink first. And that's just because it has a nipple that sticks out which makes a really good starting point for your drill bit, at which time you know it went through the apron into the table legs and was secured by screws. And then clamped everything together, made sure that everything was square as best as possible, and used while it was squared up, used it to mark all my holes and where I wanted everything to be. After that, it's the same on the short aprons. I used the same process on the long aprons. Uh, just get everything out where I wanted it to be and then clamped it all back together and screwed it together one more time. After everything was done, um, I very, very, very lightly sanded it and then applied a black stain. How it looks, how it sits, doesn't really matter. The majority of it is gonna get sanded off in the end anyway um, as you see here on this it's very very rough sanding uh, just to get a lot of those saw marks out and just to whatever your taste is to kind of leave darker area um, for the saw marks just to give it that sawmill rustic effect uh, what you see here um, I actually went over this one more time and cleaned it up just a little bit more um, and then here is me finishing it up in super high speed I wish working was actually that fast, but it never is. Matter of fact, I think this was day three of working on the table due to the temperature. Um, after that, I went back with a medium stain. Um, I think I used Minwax Special Walnut on this one uh, just to kind of fill it in and did that for the whole table.
Something else I left off is I stained all of the uh, that I used to fill the countersinks uh, with Minwax Espresso. Give a good color contrast and a pop. Uh, and just get rid of those ugly ass screws. After that, I decided with the half laps, it wasn't as sturdy as I really wanted it to be, especially to uh, be moved on the truck several miles down to the market. Alright guys, so we're to the building the top to go on the table. Before we do that, we need to cover up a couple of do's and dogs while drinking a little pig. So you'll see on Pinterest, DIY sites, and a bunch of other people that when you take and you marry two boards together with the grain for a tabletop, they want you to do is use big box store lumber and they want you to use pocket hole screws. Now what these pocket hole screws do is it makes a hole in the wood at an angle so that the screw goes through the wood into the next piece. And they want you to do this overlapping over and over again. Problem with this is store-bought wood actually has a much higher moisture content than wood that is actually made to build furniture with. Structural grade lumber has a moisture content of around 10 to 15 percent. Whereas your fine woodworking and your furniture built wood, somewhere between 6 and 10. So, what does that mean for us? Why don't we want to use pocket hole screws? If you're doing a small cabinet, a small entertainment center, something's very rustic looking, that's fine. But once you get into larger boards, 2x4s, 2x6s, 1x10s, 1x12s, that you're using to do this, they're going to change with the seasons. And they're normally going to change in between the growth rings of the wood. So, to exaggerate now, so you have a piece of wood, and these are your growth rings, right? The wood's not going to expand and contract this way. It's going to fill in between these growth rings with the moisture and it's going to expand and contract width wise. So what's going to happen Shit. So what's going to happen with one piece of wood in a hand is as it explodes So, so as the wood gains moisture, it's actually going to push it apart. And those screws are going to act like hinge points and cause the top to either cut, twist, or buckle. Now one way to do this is actually to joint the sides of these together. you notice so far I don't actually own a joiner. It's actually the next on my to purchase list. But there's lots of other videos here on YouTube that show you how to make a joining jig for a table saw. Or you can use a hand planer or a box plane on these two sides to trim them up. And then either A, use biscuit joints, B, use dowel joints, or C, just laminate the boards together. Um, if I do something and I have to use pocket hole screws, I try to put a piece of tape or two pieces of paper on the inside of the joints with enough sticking out where I can pull the majority of it out to create just a very, very, very small air gap. Just some things to keep in thought uh, when you're building bigger projects like this. Um, I sure would hate for a customer to pay three, four, five hundred dollars for a very large kitchen table or a very large kitchen island. And as soon as the season change, it's warped, it's buckled, it's broken, it's twisted, it's no longer level. Uh, those are things that are bad for business they're bad for our brand name and they're just bad for everybody because I'm going to have to build them a new tabletop for free. Uh, so let's finish this damn thing up. Nothing like a mid mid video beer break. Um, I 
Uh, after starting it up, it became a work table that I used to run my planer on, get all the boards down to the same sit thickness. After that, it was bored to the first of lengths, and or at least close, I decided I was going to square it up on the back side anyway. Hey guys, just a quick little tool trick. Uh, I was up in Atlanta, or down in Atlanta this weekend, and picked up a Baco card scraper from Highland Woodworking Supply. Excellent place if you're ever there. They're due a shout out. Uh, go check them out. The guys that work there are phenomenal and will be able to help you. Um, cheap card scraper. I've never used one before, up until about an hour ago. Um, but I'm trying to get into doing a little bit finer things here and there, not so much chunky, bulky uh, power tool stuff. They come pre-sharpened, but not very well. Uh, you can look online on how to hone and, and sharpen the card scrapers, but uh, even for a cheap piece, after just a couple of minutes of working, working it, uh, it's working great. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this tabletop glued up uh, so I can get everything aligned. And then uh, we'll probably be using this a little bit more. After they were cut, it was time for glue up. Uh, getting everything nice and clamped down. I've got a little bit more of a bow than I really wanted to. So I threw some side supports down, clamped it to the table, which really actually made for a custom fit. What you also see me doing there is making sure that I get the wax paper, uh, not only up under the board, but up under the pipe as well as a lot of times that glue will react uh, with the metal and leave it to get out of the wood. After the glue had enough time to dry, um, I had a couple of uneven spots uh, which were quickly taken care of and gotten rid of with the hand plane which I realized very quickly I had forgot to sharpen, uh, which was just a quick project to get it done. After that, I used the card scraper that you saw earlier uh, to go back and just get all of the tool marks out of the wood left by the hand plane. I then squared up both edges of the table using a track saw. And after that, it was death by sanding. Uh, for the first half of this, I had forgot my dust mask and had lots of wood boogers for the next week or two. And it's kind of awesome. After everything was sanded down, uh, roughly, uh, to about where I wanted it, it was just attaching the tabletop with some hanger brackets. Um, working on the floor a lot of the times really helps out with that. Beats having to pick up the tabletop. For that, I put a round over all the way around the table just to give it a little bit of a finer look and uh, really just liven it up a little bit more. And my favorite part of any project now that the usage of power tools was over and it was time for a high gravity high alcohol by volume very failing meal replace I mean beer uh, for the remainder of everything else I was doing. a little bit of a refreshment in. Um, I used a light stain and it dried just a hair darker than I really wanted it to. Uh, I thought my top boards were a little too light for the very dark table base uh, but I didn't want to darken them up too much because I didn't want it to just be one giant brown blob uh, in the middle of the customer's kitchen. So again I used a contrasting color and then I went into putting the bottom braces on. My original plan was to do a recess um, until Mama Cop come up and thought that some laid over 2x4s and 1x6s evenly spaced uh, would give it more of that kind of country film and charm, which I left out in the recording. After everything else was said and done, the entire project, top and bottom, legs and sides, all got a healthy coat of polycrylic, and then it was time to attach the hardware. Um, I used a wrought iron uh, towel rack and what I refer to as octopus hooks uh, on the side just to hang utensils or towels or whatever you might need in the kitchen. 
So there's a shot of the half lap joints that I did, um, the dowels uh, where the screws were, um, the wrought iron towel rack, and the nice little finished project.